At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programmes offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, mandatory clearing of OTC derivatives and the impact that's going to have on the market. Um, I just want to start off with some first thoughts. Um, the, this statement... I've so made. we're going to start with uh, really talking about the regulatory reform and what's happened with respect to OTC derivatives. And some of this you're probably very familiar with. Um, OTC derivatives were generally seen as causing or at least contributing to what I will refer to. Well, there's one final piece of that jigsaw that came in later, which was the bilateral margin requirements. So now the idea was to say, well, suppose we have a, a trade that can't be centrally cleared. Why don't we require that the counterparties would put up margin, that's collateral, in the same way as if they were clearing it? So in the bilateral market, historically, over many years, banks and other participants have agreed. Now, in reality, it looks a bit more complex than I just represented. And it looks a bit more complex for a number of reasons, as you can see on this diagram here. Reason number one, not everything can be cleared, as I already said, so there will still be bilateral trades. They are the solid red lines. There, of course, are clear trades. That sounds a bit like a bilateral market, so you might have the question as to why you would see clearing a trade as being advantageous. Now, I mentioned the financial resources the CCP has. This is the so-called loss waterfall that defines uh, if a clearing member defaults, how the CCP would have... So you can see that a lot of things are going to be changing. Uh, let me leave you with one small picture. Um, this is a very simplified framework of how uh, loss absorbency occurs in different markets. And we've got three different markets. The first one is a bilaterally cleared market with no margin, no collateral. Um, so, for example, two banks transacting with each other, C1 and C2, in this bilateral market on the top left... Um, so, another question here. How do forced allocation work? <laughs> it's another good question, and it's another, therefore it's another very difficult question to answer. I think the simple answer is uh, it's very hard to know, because a forced allocation is a situation where you would imagine... That